This is the absolute best time to buy a home. Now, there are three reasons for that. Number one, as we get into the fall, late 2024 here, home prices will be at their lowest point that you'll see. Number two, homes will be sitting on the market for a longer time frame than they typically do for the rest of the year. And number three, interest rates have come down to a more reasonable level. Now, there are two things I'm gonna go over with you here on this video. I'm gonna go over the historical annual stats to show you why from September to January, you'll always get the lowest price on that home than you will any other time during the year. And number two, I'm gonna go over specific mortgage payments with you to show the difference in a payment for a certain priced home between today, yesterday, and tomorrow. And what I define as today is from September to January here over the next few months. When I'm referencing tomorrow, I'm talking about earlier this year when rates were higher, closer to seven and a half percent. And when I'm talking about tomorrow, I'm speaking on what the market will look like as we get into next year and the busy spring season. So you can see why the monthly mortgage payment today is going to be cheaper than both what it was yesterday, earlier this year, and what it'll be tomorrow as we get into next year and the spring season. So like I said, the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna go over the historical data with you to show why the home prices that you'll get here over the next few months will be lower than anything you'll get as we get into next year. So let's jump in and let's look at the numbers here. You can see the graph I've got pulled up. Now, before we jump into these median sales price numbers really quickly, I wanna talk about the days on market. I also mentioned up front that as we get through the next few months, this will be the time where homes sit on the market the longest uh, when we're comparing it to any other time of year, which as a buyer, that provides more opportunity for you to get in on, this, on something that doesn't have a bidding more where you can negotiate more and things like that. So you can see the cyclical nature here of the days on market depending on where in the season we are. As we get through the busy season, those days on market take a dive and homes sell for quite a bit faster. So that's showing us that there is quite a bit more competition in the early parts of the year that we'll see in, you know, really March until June of, of every year. That's the typical busiest time where those days on market really start to fall. You can see here we are starting to climb back up over the last couple of months and this trend will continue we can see that trend line every year those days on market increase as we get into the fall so that will provide as a buyer that will provide you some more opportunity now let's look at those sales prices like I mentioned so the most important thing to see here is again the cyclical nature of the market yes home prices are going up every year on average and over time you can see this trend line will continue to go up however there are dips and valleys in every market and so when people come to me and they talk to me and say hey i want to try to time the market well it's almost impossible to time the market but you can analyze what it does on a yearly basis in each specific season and try to determine what the best time for you might be to enter the market based on what you're trying to do. So if we go through over the last five years here since 2019, you can see all these dips in home prices right here. And what does this represent? This represents the end to beginning of every year. This really represents November, December, January of every year when these home prices start to dip. And regardless of how hot the market is, I mean, look at 2021, uh, to midway through 2022 when the market was the absolute hottest, we still had a dip at the end of 2021, uh, despite rates being very, very low. So this is very normal for a market to see this as we get into the fall and winter time, those prices will start to trend down. And so that gives buyers some more opportunity to get a home at a lower price point. Now, because we're talking on this video about why this is the best time to buy, if you're thinking about purchasing a home and you're saying, hey, maybe I'll wait until the spring of 2025, maybe rates will come down a little bit 
more. Uh, maybe there's gonna be more options on the market. And while that can certainly be a factor to take into consideration, I'm gonna show you why the most opportunity in terms of getting the best deal financially for a home happens in the latter parts of every year. Really, we're talking September, October until uh, the January timeframe. So you can see, again, all these dips and valleys. If we look at the price difference for each of these dips and, and, and high points over the last five years, you're gonna see how fast home prices actually rise over a three to six month period. So let's start with 2023 here. So you can see these prices here at the uh, beginning of 2024, end of 2023, were about 850,000 meeting home price in King County. As we got up to the peak of the market this year in May, those prices were over a million dollars. They were a million 20. This is a jump of 20, percent. And again, interest rates were not great. <laughs> the interest rates were in the sevens. And we still had a jump of about 20% in median home prices in King County over that time frame from January until May. If we look at the previous year, 2023, uh, we started uh, at the bottom early 2023, late 2022 at about 800,000 we jumped up to over 933,000 in June. So we've got this uh, peak right here. This jump specifically in 2023 was 16%. Again, not good rates. I mean, rates had hit almost 8% in 2023. We still jumped up quite a bit. Now, if we go to 2022, again, late 2021, early 2022, those prices were about 785. This is where we saw the biggest jump, of course, uh, because those rates were low and they were just starting to go up. We jumped up all the way to a million dollars for that median price point up here. This jump is the most dramatic. Like I said, this is a 27% increase in median home values over a you know, four to six month period. Um, let's go to 2021. So again, at the bottom there, 733,000, and we jumped up right up to about 875,000 in May. So this jump in 2021 was about 19%. All right, let's go to 2020. 2020 is a pretty weird year, of course, because that's when COVID happened. Um, so this jump, got it didn't get delayed it did jump and then it fell off the map because everything shut down including real estate so we're doing a shorter time frame for that jump in 2020 before COVID happened but we still had a significant jump in just a couple of months in january of 2020 we were at the bottom of prices at 644 and by march we were all the way up to 725 already so just in a three month time frame, those prices still jumped up 13%. And then COVID came in and, and changed everything um, and, and had a temporary dip and then started going back up. Now, if we go pre-COVID to see, hey, what was it like on a semi-normal uh, world before COVID even happened, bottom in late 2018, early 2019 at about 610,000. As we got to the peak in April, May, June, we hit 699, 700,000 right up here. So this jump in 2019 was 15%. All right, so you can see over the last few years since 2019, there's been a double digit jump in median home values, median home prices from late in the year, we're talking November, December, January, until the peak of that season in April, May, June. This is a significant jump and this is more than people think. And oftentimes people come to me and they say, hey, I'm gonna wait until the busier season when there's more inventory on the market. Maybe interest rates will have fallen by then and so I can get a better deal. Well, what they don't realize is even though interest rates might have come a little bit lower for that, which is what people are predicting as we get through this year into next season, next spring, 
those home prices are gonna be significantly higher. And so if we take these six uh, numbers here, these six jumps in prices, and we just average them out, this comes out to 18% jump in median home prices, specifically in King County, when we were talking about the slow season, November, December, until the busy season in April, May, June. So on average, about 18% jump in those prices in that four to six month time frame. All right, so this was step one to see, hey, the home prices will very, very, very likely go up as we get into next year. So if you think you're gonna wait and save some money because maybe the interest rates are gonna be lower, that's probably not the case. Now let's go actually look at that specifically. Let's dive into some numbers and look at specific mortgage payments. Let's take the mortgage payment for today, what it would be with kind of these lower interest rates we're starting to see. Let's compare it to what it would have been when we were at 7.5% rates earlier this year. And then let's compare it to what it will be next year uh, with this 18% jump in home prices with maybe rates coming down even a little bit more. And let's figure out which payment, monthly payment would be the cheapest. All right, so I've got my calculator pulled up here. So this is our mortgage calculator. I'm gonna do this, uh, this kind of this test, this calculation at two different home price uh, ranges. So first we'll start at 700,000, a little bit more of an entry level price point in some areas. Again, you know, Snohomish County, King County, Pierce County, there's some areas where, where you can still be buying homes for 700,000, but it is a more entry level price point. But let's look at this here and let's just see the change in the numbers. All right, so let's first look at the payment today. Now rates are on average right about 6% uh, for those mortgage rates. Um, so let's take a $700,000 home. Let's say you're going 20% down payment, that's $140,000. We've got the taxes and estimated homeowners insurance in here. Your payment right now on this home is gonna be in the ballpark of $3,940. Again, this is at a 6% interest rate with 20% down on a $700,000 house. Let's say we had those rates that we saw earlier this year at 7.5%. How is that? How would that have changed your payment? How much have you saved now by having those interest rates come down to 6%? So at 7.5%, that payment was almost $4,500. So You've saved over $500 a month with that interest rate coming down from seven and a half to now where it's at about 6%. So that's great savings to begin with compared to what you would have seen earlier this year. Let's take a look at a 5% down payment. A lot of first time buyers going with 5% down to start, which is fantastic. Um, let's start again. Let's look at 6% for that rate on what it would be today. You're talking at about $5,146 uh, at today's 6% rate. If we compare that to what the rate was earlier this year at 7.5, that goes all the way up to over $5,800. So we're talking almost 700, about $650 monthly increase just by that rate coming down from 7.5 to 6. Now let's talk about what that payment is going to look like as we get to next year. Now a lot of people say they think rates are going to continue to come down. They're at about 6% and maybe by early next year in the busy spring selling season, maybe those rates are closer to five and a half percent. So let's look at what it would be at five and a half percent. But keep in mind, it's not just the same home price at five and a half percent. On average, we have an 18% jump in those median home prices over that time frame. So let's take our 700,000 and let's increase it by 18% in value. That's $826,000 is now what that house is likely going to be as you get to the middle of next year through that busy season. So now that home price at 826,000, let's go back to the 20% down payment, 166,000. So now you've spent $26,000 more on that down payment compared to when it was, that house was $700,000. 
Um, we're at now 5.5%. We've lowered it lower than today at 6%. We're being more optimistic that we can get a better interest rate. Now that payment is $4,330. Now remember, that payment today when the house was $700,000 at a 6% rate was just under $4,000. So it's about a, what is it, about $370 difference in that payment. It's even though rates are going to be lower potentially next spring, that payment could still in this example be $370 a month more because that home price has gone up so much. So that's the important thing to keep in mind just because that rate's going to come down and you think you're going to get a better deal the rise in that home price is gonna outweigh any savings in that interest rate if it does in fact come down somewhere around half a percent. Let's look at the 5% uh, example here. So we're talking about just over 41,000 uh, for that median or for that down payment. And again, at five and a half percent, that payment is about $5,700 and 18. And again, previously it was $5,146. So we're up over five, almost $600 um, again a month by waiting until the springtime. So the lower rates does not mean more savings. So really quickly, let's just do one more example at a higher priced home. Let's go 1.3 million. Let's do the 20% 20, uh, 20 down, 260,000. Let's go back to our 6% rate. We've gotta raise our taxes up because this house is gonna be higher in property taxes. <clears throat> All right, so this home just today, today's example, this $1.3 million home at today's 6%-ish interest rates is going to be about $7,100 for that monthly payment. If we compare that to the interest rate we had earlier this year at seven and a half, it's about $1,000 more. So in this example, at this price point, you've potentially saved almost $1,000 a month by those rates coming from seven and a half to almost 6%. Now, let's compare it to what it would be in the spring. Again, 18% increase in value. That's what we're looking at. This $1.3 million house becomes $1,534,000. Uh, so your down payment, if you wanted to keep at 20% down, your down payment now goes from 260,000 to 307,000. So you've already spent way more money out of pocket just to keep that LTV at 80%. Now we're looking at the interest rate today. Oops, we're gonna go five and a half percent. We're building in a little break on those interest rates. And again, I can't predict this. Nobody knows what the rates are gonna be in the spring. I think the general consensus is they could continue to trickle down, um, but you're not gonna see rates in the fours. I, I would be shocked at that, but we're being optimistic here and saying rates could be at five and a half. They may not even be at five and a half percent. They may still be close to six, but we're being optimistic here at five and a half percent, that payment has gone to over $7,800. Again, it was just over $7,100 in you know today's, uh, uh, today's financial picture uh, with 6% rates and the current home price. So you've increased about $700 a month for that monthly payment by waiting to get a better rate and waiting until the busy season. All right, so this is just some general info, some things you might be wanting to think about if home buying is on your list of things to do here in the near future, whether it's this year or next year, and you're trying to decide when the best time for you might be to buy a home. I've, I've gone over the numbers, I've shown you financially, on average, it is going to be a better deal to buy late in the year. You're gonna get a better home price. Uh, rates have come down a little bit, so we, right now they're around 6%, um, and homes are gonna sit on the market for a little bit longer than average, so you could have uh, less competition and more room to negotiate those homes. Now, the downside to buying this year, most people know it, is inventory is much lower. So 
If you are gonna buy in the October, November, December, January timeframe, just know it could be more difficult to find that right home that you're super happy with. Certainly a lot of people do, and I have clients buy this time of year every single year and end up finding a great home, uh, but it does get a little bit more difficult because there are less options on the market. If you have any further questions or, or wanna talk about your home buying plans and trying to figure out when the best time might be for you to do that, feel free to reach out to me. I am an active real estate broker here in the greater Seattle area. Always love helping with your home buying and selling plans. Thanks for watching this one.